Harrogate Council, because I've been manning these barriers to make sure people aren't getting tickets. Yeah. Yeah. But great, it's being covered. Mm. Oh, it most certainly is. is. Title you're used to the business? The? Type of business title. It is MGR. MGR. My Greek Ray Consult with us. Um, I heard nothing. What sort of problems have you experienced from them yourself? Well, immediately they came in, they took out loading bays. I've done about it if you had an opportunity to do something. What would you say? Well, Someone's going in. Here, but always get through. Residents in this North London road have been having serious problems. They can't get through to their own homes. Local campaigner, Margaret Mark Brady, Brady, is joining me here today. <laughs> Margaret, look, this is a very serious issue and I noticed there are some homemade signs down here. So how did these come about? Um, they came about because when Bose LTN was put in, um, this, the locals did try and put signs up to warn people so they wouldn't go through and get fined. Um, unfortunately, these were ripped down by the pro-LTN activists. Um, so far, these have remained, which I'm surprised about, and I'm glad that it's warning people that there may be something in the head that they could get fined by. Not everyone recognises this red circle sign with a car and a motorbike on it. It actually invites them in, is what they're telling me when I'm stopping them going through the barriers. There's a sign hidden there. Wow, that's very deceptive, isn't it? Mm. But, truthfully, Margaret, what actually caught you on to this? Because this has been happening across the other boroughs and different people have found different ways of finding out about it. What triggered it with you? What brought it to your attention? Right, so when it first started affecting me, um, so obviously I'd heard about Wolf and Forest and, you know, paid some heed to it. Um, I believe Islington started before ours did, um, but it was uh, when Bose was initially put in and I didn't even know about the Fox Lane one till afterwards. Um, when I realised I'm now sitting in traffic that's twice as much, so a 15 minute journey to my mum's in Haringey as I'm her carer, it would turn into 45 and I didn't see why I should be doing that three times a day. Why are we, you know, if it's supposed to be to reduce pollution, it's not doing the job that they say it says on the tin, you know. Right, well in yeah. true neighbourly um, spirit, you've yeah. actually decided to do something about this. Now obviously there are signs here advising people. Mm. What other sort of actions uh, have you been able to take to try to make it more aware for people? Right, so um, when both initially first happened, uh, after a month or two, I started manning the barriers, making sure that I was warning people, you'll get fined if you go through this barrier. Um, and I've taken it from there. I ended up um, being uh, a candidate for the local elections, uh, fighting against the LTNs and all the issues that they cause. Because it's not just about getting fines, it's impeding people getting to another area, to school, to their jobs. Uh, families, been, you know, taking children to school, going on to do their work. Uh, it's repeated. There's been 27 uh, emergency delays by the ambulance. 27. 27. Wow. Recorded. Over what sort of period of time is that? Uh, of over the two years that they started recording it, because obviously they weren't recording it to begin with, and that's for Fox Lane and Bowes, and that's Enfield. Well, that's quite shocking. Well, I suppose if it's ambulances, I suppose at, at end of life. How on earth do funeral directors manage, I suppose, I mean, how are they going to get by to get to Which people's... Which is exactly what's happening down here. There's right. a funeral director who's extremely upset because it has, um, you know, um, caused his business some difficulty. Um, I mean, we, we've been particularly concerned about this side of things because it's such a sensitive side of business and society. It's essential. Yes. And it's not fair that you should be treated this way or that people around you should... I, I, can, I can understand them looking at the residential aspect, but when it comes to a road that, what we call it, a high street, and it's affecting the businesses, you know, basically what they've done is they've closed this side of Middleton Road. The only access is from Greenland, so no one from the Bounds Green, the Bose Park area can actually get to the shops here unless they're walking. And more to the point, your particular premises? My premises, I've got an alleyway which I've got 21 funeral cars. We work from here and because of the nature of my business, 
I don't bring my vehicles in front of my property. I, I do it discreetly. Of course. We can't access it. So they've actually given you access problems? No, I can't, right. yeah, I've, I've, I've got problems. I cannot access my alleyway. I've got to turn left illegally. Can I ask you straight forward, who's your local councillor? That I'm looking into. Right, so I'm he hasn't made himself known to you? No one, no one has. Right, so there appears to be no discovery done, at least none that you know of, and no consultation. No. Nope. And you've not been approached? No. Nope. And the nature of your business size? Yeah. A funeral director? Yeah. Well, I think that's quite shocking to me. And I, I wrote to the council um, last week, telling them the problems we're having here. They asked for my insurance policy, which I sent to them, showing that we've got the vehicles for our fleet. Five days, it's been over a week, and I still haven't heard anything. And yet they wouldn't talk to the funeral association to check for themselves anyway. No. They thought they'd put one on you to what? On everyone. you? On everyone. On everyone here in Newlands and Road. Well, this seems to me like they're picking off people when they do say something, as opposed to going to trade organisations that would simply tell them this information. Yeah, it's what they've done is utterly disgusting. Um, we're all uh, uh, we all oppose it here. You know, we've become one voice now in Middleton Road, and we just want to get together um, and just fight this. And we will, we will fight it to the end. Peter, another question is this. Obviously, in the nature of your line of work, there are people who are going to come from outside the area, not familiar with this area whatsoever, because there's my family viewing. Families are going to come here, and you have to direct people, and you're going to have a right job doing that, aren't you? How does that for, work? For, for many years, they haven't had the right signage um, for the no-entry sign. It's just a money-making scheme. So they, they haven't clearly displayed these signs here, which, personally, I think is illegal. But yet, yeah, people still have to pay the fine. Now, all my families, we've been based here for over 25 years. All my families that know me, my transporters for, for my deliveries, my florists, they can't access the property. They, act, they come up Middleton Road and they can't turn left to my servicing area. Well, I couldn't think of a finer way to destroy a business, really. I mean, this looks like the destruction of an established business that's an essential part of the community. We had, is it Mike Hakan or Mike Hattan? Who's Mike uh, Carter. H H H Carter, that's right. He, he, came, he came by the other day and I actually said to him, look, what he you're... He promised he's going to come back. He hasn't. He hasn't. And I said to him, what you're driving me to do is to empty my property. I'll take all the window panes out and fill the property up with pigeons. And he looked at me. And I said, I'll train these pigeons, so every time you walk past, they'll fly out and shit on you. Well, I, I don't think you could have put it better, really. Yes, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Yeah. They're driving us to this. Yeah. It's, you know, it's just, it's just not on. It's everyone, everyone in Middleton Road is affected by this. You know, it's just what they've done is that they've given it no, no thought, nothing. It's clearly a money-making scheme. Right, special message time. They're going to get to see this, you can be sure of it. We're going to be pursuing them. We're going to be asking questions, certainly for and on your behalf, and of the local community. Thank you. What sort of question would you like to put directly to the Chief Executive Officer of Harrogate Council? Where's our support? Where is our support as business traders, as traders and business um, and rate, high rate payers for Harringay Council? And we've supported the Harringay Council for many years. Oh, I know. Yeah. They're driving us out. They're driving us out. I've got no option but to look for another premises. Wow, driving you out of business. Yeah. Well, I think that's a, it's, a it's shocking for, thing. It's for, it's for my customers. Okay. You, you know, they, 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 they come here, they can't park here now because of the pay and display, which, okay, we, we'll pay on the majority of the time. They, they come here, family, our families are bereaved. You know, the last thing they want to do is come here and then how do we get out of here or how do we get in here? Well, they're just... I don't know, I don't know what this country's coming to, what this council's coming to. Yeah, can I ask you a question? Can we come back again sometime and, and follow you, Absolutely. talk to you about this, perhaps we can sit down more, yeah. and anything you'd like to put forward to us? Absolutely. You know, we'd be very, very happy. You know, you know, our viewers, uh, yourself, you are the viewers, you can make your own minds up on what's actually going on here. Traditional family business, an essential part of the fabric of the community, appears to be wholesale, destroyed and taken apart by the borough of Harringay. Um, this is what it appears to be. This is the man who's suffering this, as you've heard many, many of us today. So you can make your own mind up what you might like to do. Perhaps you might like to talk to your local councillor about this. But at either rate, keep watching us, keep watching. Here's some free news from media, and we'll be on this story on a very close basis now. We'll be looking at this very, very carefully. Peter, thanks very much for joining us today. You're welcome. Much Thank you. Thank you very much.